Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. I want to, we've got a great esteemed uh, group of guests today, and I don't know whether they even want to be here because so much ugliness <laughs> out of Washington and all the scandal and the sexual stuff. But uh, Stan Barnes is, is the head of Copper State Consulting Group. On the uh, left of your screen, on the right of your screen, Doug Cole, Senior Vice President of High Ground. And your role in the Symington administration was communications? Yeah, I was the Deputy Chief of Staff from Lights On in 1991. Uh, lights off in 1997. I was, I was the only staffer on the ninth floor that uh, I was there the duration. And yes, I did communication. So I was Governor Symington's spokesperson throughout was, his whole. Was his that the most fun you had? Most fun you had? It was because I remember a debate in this very building oh, when yeah. you were working uh, for KVOA down yes, in Tucson. Yes, yes. Before and you I, moderated the, 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 exactly the, the, right. the final, the <laughs> final Goddard Terry Symington Goddard debate. Is right, right over here there. in this room. He's right <laughs> over there. And he That's had exactly the flu. Right. Yeah, Goddard did. He had the flu. Yes. And, and uh, the poor guy, was, it was uh, just he was a, struggling. It was a painful experience. Yeah, he was struggling. Yes. Um, guys, I, I don't know what to make of what's happening in Washington uh, with all the sexual um, impropriety going on. Did you, were, is everybody on the inside aware that this is just part of, part of what goes on in D.C.? I and think the, it's fair enough. I mean, I've never served there, uh, but it's, it's the nature of human beings when given some sort of power and autonomy that... Uh, bad things can come out if that's, and you're away from home a lot. And you're away from people. home, so it, it's actually uh, accepted as common among some people. It's also accepted in many state capitals around the country, and our own state capital and and others from Tallahassee to Sacramento are having their own cathartic change that's happening to them. Once we get through this, Doug, do you think it actually changes something forever? Or is this just because politicians tend to be high-risk individuals? If you're going to put your job on the line every two or four years or six, if it's a Senate job, you have to be a high-risk kind of nature, a risky, risky behavior person, right? Right. But what will happen, which is what normally happens in politics, there will be an overreaction. And... That will happen, and then it'll fade away, and, and something else will pop up five years from now. An overreaction I mean, just, in politics? I can't imagine. That's just how it happens. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. It's stunning. Viewers at home, I, 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 hope, I hope you're off the floor now. I know that's a shocking yeah. revelation. Yeah, I think we're going to go through our, our Puritan moment. I mean, this is happening all over the country, and it's happening in Arizona. It's happening with Trent Franks, and it's, wow. we're having that moment. I think it'll last for a generation. I think mm -hmm. it'll be here for a decade or so. And then maybe human nature will kick in again. Huh? Okay, you brought up the name. Let's roll tape number four. Trent Franks was on this very program three weeks ago. And I, I talked to him. I asked him about this exact issue and said, how much of this is going on in D.C.? And he said, well, you know, I've seen a lot of things. And I had no idea at that moment that the wheels were probably spinning oh, yeah. in his head. They had to be. They had to be. They had, that, that had to be already been, being put in motion at that point. Were, did this shock you? Yes, it did. It, it shocked me. At, he's a at, very religious guy. I mean, he's a very... And I've always had a great relationship with him. But I, I mean, you go back and look, you look, look at, you know, uh, Tammy Faye Baker and, and, you know, the Bakers. I mean, the, the, the path is littered with evangelicals, unfortunately, that, that uh, ran afoul of many things. Is it a cover? I don't know. Is it I a good know. cover story? What, what, what really surprised me with, with, with former Congressman Franks was what, what the event was. Yeah, that's the, I that's think, the thing that really the surprised surrogacy. me. There were, there were rumors about the congressman for, that have dogged him forever, including that's why he didn't run for the U.S. Senate when that he had his true. opportunity. That is true. Those rumors are, are, you know, fill Arizona politics. But it was the idea... Let, let's let people in on that. Okay. What, what I have heard is that he didn't run for Jeff... When Jeff Flake ran for U.S. Senate, he didn't run because the flake people came to him and said, we have stuff. Yeah, it's the unwritten rule. And they drove rule. him out. That's yeah. right. It, they did drive him out. It's mm -hmm. the unwritten rule that the senior guy in, in your party is the one that gets to decide whether or not he's running for the U.S. Senate. And in this case, it was up to Trent Franks whether or not he wanted to do it. And he did not because essentially the bad news was going to come out about him then if he did. So we opted to just keep the news under wraps and to retain his seat. Okay, exactly. and so what this gets to is that there is more there than simply offering someone, inartfully, a surrogacy op option for $5 million, which was absurd on its face. 
I mean, surrogacy is a $20,000 to $50,000 proposition. Well, one could lead to that conclusion because of the time difference between, between the 2012 and today. And I think the, sur the, the sur surrogacy issues came up in the last couple of years, yeah. is my understanding. We okay. haven't had a, a full debrief on what exactly happened here. What is, it's safe to say in that district, which is predictably red, it's a Republican-dominated mm -hmm. district, there will be somebody with an R after their name who wins that oh, yeah. seat. Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. not in jeopardy. Absolutely. absolutely true. Yeah. yeah, in fact, it feels like every uh, member of the state legislature west of Central Avenue is going to run for that that job. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but there's a lot of legislators sure. that are ready to go, have already announced. Well, we, we had today uh, State Senator Steve Montenegro, who right. represents Legislative District 13, which is only about 8% of CD8, by the way. Uh, he resigned his Senate seat. He was going to run against uh, Secretary of State mm -hmm. Michelle Reagan. So now he's all in on the CD8 race. Now, what's interesting about uh, uh, former State Senator Steve Montenegro is he's a longtime staffer, district staffer for Congressman Trent Franks. Right. So, and uh, he's embracing him. I mean, yeah, and yeah. he's hoping for the endorsement. Right. And he wants the endorsement. Exactly. Right. So, okay. so uh, my, my first question to him, if I was his opponent, is what did you know and when did you know it and why didn't you say anything? Oh, that's interesting. There's going to be, it, I mean, this is a phenomenon we don't get very often, a special election like this. And so, uh, of all the candidates that have announced so far, or that we think Lasko, are going to announce, uh, Hickman. Hickman, I know, no, no, Hick, Hickman's no. out. Oh, he's, he is yeah, out. He's not running. Yeah, he announced a couple days ago that he's not running. He would have been very formidable. I think so, too, because he has high name. Well, almost it. that whole district is, right. is a supervisory district. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, that's the point I was about to make, that none of them uh, have the, the personal wealth to stroke a six-figure check and immediately put themselves on television right. and start marketing them as different from the rest of the crowd. So this the benefits people that can either raise money quickly or have their own okay. name ID, ID and, and ground network. game and that yeah. sort of thing. Okay. Like, um, we've got we've got Jeff Flake's seat up for grabs. He suddenly retires because he's out of step. He feels with yeah. the Republican Party. Writes the book. We had uh, Senator Flake on as well about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Let me roll tape number five. Uh, well, we'll show Flake. Um, yeah. Did this all surprise you that he was? No, I was not surprised. I, I was. I was not surprised. I mean, I, it, it takes a lot of personal introspection to withdraw from a U.S. US Senate seat. I agree. Well, I you've agree. been in one term. And, and I, I, it just, it, you know, I, he's my neighbor. I know him very well. And I just didn't think he was going to surrender. Had and he ever had, said anything yeah. to you that led you to believe no, that he, he might? Didn't. In fact, he was raising saying. money a week prior. He was. Oh, as soon as he put out the book, I thought it was over. Well, it was, I agree it, with that. It was yeah. either the book was going to somehow work its magic. Or not it was going to fall. Not in this environment. No, I, I, I asked him what can he magic. Yeah. He was trying to be an authentic truth teller in his own space. Yes. And it, and it just did not play. I asked him the question, would you have written that book if you were actually going to run again? And he said, I probably wouldn't have. Yeah. So he knew when he wrote it, he was probably not going to run. Yeah, yeah. He admitted to that yeah. on this program. Yeah. That, okay. that, that was my conclusion. So. He might be regretting it in the space of... Alabama and Roy Moore and Bannon and all that that is. I don't know, maybe he's looked at himself in the mirror and said, maybe I pulled the plug a little too early. Well, I still wonder this about, um, about uh, Franken. Franken's left a little bit of the door ajar. You know, he, he said he's leaving, but it's undetermined. Well, the, the, the fun theory was he was going to see if Roy Moore went to the U.S. Exactly. 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 And then he was going to play on that. So then, now that Roy gone. Moore is out, he's right. probably done. That's right. He's done. Okay. Yeah. Because people are kind of rethinking some of this. Yeah. That without some, you know, without an actual assault or a rape or a sexual uh, advance that is so over the top, what he did, unwanted, it's, it's unseemly as all get out, but, right. but maybe not fatal. Well, and, and the governor of, uh, of uh, Minnesota? Minnesota announced that his lieutenant governor is going to be... True. Al's, Al's replacement. You know, to your point, John, I think uh, it can be said that Al Franken took one for the team. Right. The team went to him and said, we're going to run this play against Donald Trump, the president, yes, and I the agree. Republicans, mm -hmm. and this is going to be our 2018 platform, but we can't do it with you and John Conyers. Yeah. Nope. Right. And so you're going to have to go. And, right. and I think that was one reason his goodbye speech was as, as uh, salted as it was. That he said in his own voice, it's no, the irony is not lost on me that right. I'm resigning yeah, I'm not... and Donald Trump's still exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Do you guys believe that this is all theater to try to eventually get at Donald Trump and the 16 accusers and say, look, people are leaving high positions because of this stuff. 
Mr. President, you have to, too. Listen, we lived through this in the 90s with Bill Clinton, time and time again. Um, Times have changed. I, I, but, but the presidency is a different thing. It's, it's a different thing. And I think he weathers this. I, it will always be part of the Donald Trump narrative, but I think he weathers it. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Th I agree with your premise that it is what the Democrats think, their hammer, which to yeah. hit the Republicans and the president. And I agree with Doug. I think he's going to weather it for one reason. He's just not going to surrender, period, no. end of story. <laughs> and, and so and it's short of an impeachment. And that's why the, the, the U.S. House being in play in the 2018 election Supporting really is, is whether or not we're going to impeach Donald that's Trump. Where right. That's where he did articles is. of impeachment. Right. That's what it is. Right. And that's, that, that's, why, that's why Martha McSally's district in southern Arizona is important. That's why CD9 is important up here. CD8's Republican no matter right. what. O'Halloran, I think, is going to be safe. But, but those two seats, uh, McSally's right. have, two and, and, and uh, 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 CD9, that's why they're important. There's, there's only a handful of, of swing districts around the country mm -hmm. out of all the... And for us, it's one we and, have, and We nine. have actually three of them. We do. Yeah, we do. Three out of our nine yeah. are swing districts. Mm -hmm. So what, Arizona, be, between that and Flake's vacancy and whatever happens, God bless to John McCain, we're going to have more national money in the state of Arizona than we've ever seen. We're talking about one and two and nine. Right, those correct. are yes, those, 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 those that's right. and, and these districts have changed numbers, so yeah. I get confused. It's Southern yes. Arizona, yes. Central two, Phoenix, and one is North, and then, uh, and, and then rural the Arizona, and then right? Northern. Northern. That's nine. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's get let's get to nine because uh, I think this is interesting. Let's start with the Senate race for Jeff Flake's seat. Sure. Okay, Kirsten Cinema. Let's roll tape number five. I've had her on the program many, many times. It's interesting. Right now, I can't get her to come on. You have any theory why she wouldn't want free airtime right now? I think she is experiencing some, some uh, a strategy of letting the Republicans have their bad moment in the public square. Yeah. And, and let's just not get in the way of that. And, and I think that's good politics on her part. I do, too, because she's got to remember, uh, this, is a, this is a gubernatorial cycle we're going into in 18. Okay, so um, there's going to be a 12-point Republican advantage in the, in the general. So she can't piss because off because of the turnout model. Because of the turnout right. model. So she she's got to she's got to bring a lot of PNDs and independents along with Republicans because she has to overcome immediately that 12 point deficit. So I agree with Stan. She's she's just letting it all happen and not looking too judgmental. Is she's she, raising money. Is she's she the she prohibitive money. front runner in that race? Right now she I is. Think she prohibitive. Is. That's right. I think she right is. now because we, uh, Congressman McSally hasn't stepped in yet, and and I think that she needs to get in this race, and move forward if she's going to do it. Okay, let's talk about um, tape number eight. This is Kelly Ward. Kelly Ward ran against John McCain and lost by double digits. Mm -hmm. What? Why is her her calculus now? I was speaking to her during this interview. Actually, we the day that Jeff Flake stepped out. What is she thinking would be different now? Well, she was certain that she had a weak incumbent in her party that she could have a different experience with right. than she had with the venerable John McCain. And she was right. I mean, as Jeff Flake proved, she was right. Yeah. She was on the way to winning that race. Yeah. And, and so that's what's different. It's, it's not McCain, it's Flake. Yeah, him, him stepping aside was a very bad day for her. Very bad. Very it was the day. worst day of her life exactly. because her, her old playbook her old be playbook thrown in the Colorado rivers. Yeah. No, no, no good yeah. anymore. Yeah. Now, of course, I guess it's just spin, but she said at the time, she said, look, whenever the, the guy holding the seat is gone, this is good for everybody. Because yeah, that, that, that was that, that, that's exactly that. Spin. That was spin. From two spin guys, that was spin. Yeah. <laughs> we know spin. We when know we spin. See spin. We see spin. <laughs> that was spin. <laughs> what, what, but to her Have I entered the no spin <laughs> zone? <laughs> okay, Bill. You can't even <laughs> say that anymore. To her credit, though, to her credit, uh, she's the only one in the campaign so far. She's the only one in the race so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Kelly Ward. Yes. Yeah. And the vacuum on the Republican side is so strong. But no one has, has answered the call. Everyone says Martha McSally's coming. Let's roll I some she video is. about Mar uh, Martha McSally. This is tape number six. She's, she's the congresswoman in, in CD2 in southern Arizona. Uh, pilot, you know, she's a pilot. Not just a any pilot. A yeah, A-10. War dog. A-10 pilot. First I mean, female. It's a female. very good resume. Yeah. And what she's is, a good campaigner. What does a McSally versus Kirsten Sinema uh, matchup wow. look like, I think that's a and great does race. it undercut Kirsten Cinema because it is a woman? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, it's 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 her worst nightmare. It is. It's it is her worst nightmare, and and she's able to raise money. 
McSally has, has shown herself to be a very good fundraiser, and that's going to be important. But we're going to get because of what happened in Alabama. Do you think Alabama. she's in or not? I think she's in. I think she's in. I, I, she's having a fundraiser, I'm told, um, uh, uh, next week up in, up in Prescott, and which is kind of where you go to start things, right. isn't it? Right. So I, I think she's in. I Jay, hope she's in. Jay Heiler. Is yes. Jay, it was an exploratory, but is he still in? You don't uh, hear if, a lot. If, if, if McSally's in, I don't think Jay will be. Really? Yeah, I don't think so. What I like about Jay's I like, yeah, you know, Jay's a friend. I know so, that. Yeah, he's a friend I of all of us. I, I, what I like that he brings Governor Simonton and Governor Brewer as the co-chairman of yeah. his effort. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But I, it's still an insider's uh, viewpoint. No, right. I, I, he shouldn't get in the race if McSally's in. No. So, Heiler should not. No. And I, I don't think he's right. in if, if I think if, he's if, not. If, uh, in the dark of night, are you guys enjoying all this? Is it kind of fun? <laughs> well, it gets to us watch? on your show. Yeah, well, John. that's true. Yeah. That's true. But I mean, this is this is unprecedented. The churn we're going to get here. It is. I, I mean, mean, we're having an election, then an election, within an election. Yeah. It, it's just crazy. And if you if you do what we do at the state capitol as well, the churn there is accelerated, you know, by twice, by three times. Right. It's, Not it's as it doesn't get as much press, but it's true. Exactly. Exactly that right. That right. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back on Newsmaker Sunday, and it's a delicate topic. The health of John McCain. Uh, what happens if John McCain cannot fulfill his term? We're back on Newsmaker Sunday in a moment. Back on Newsmaker Sunday with two guys who have been around the block in Arizona politics and longtime Arizonans, by the way. Uh, Stan Barnes, Copper State Consulting Group, and Doug Cole on the right of your screen, a senior vice president with High Ground. Let's roll, uh, and this is, this is a delicate topic to get into, so let's just say this up front. We wish, wish John McCain all the best, but his health is without question uncertain at this point. Yeah, that's what I say. He's only human, after all. Yeah. I mean, we, I revere him. I know Doug does. I know you do. I know a lot of your viewers do. He's done a great thing for Arizona, and we've been fortunate to have him as our senator, but he is only human, and it's going to happen to all of us someday, and right now, He's in, he's in big trouble. Yeah, and I think that human factor really came home this week when uh, Meghan McCain and uh, had, had former Vice President Joe Biden. His emotional show. stuff. Yeah. That, if you watch that tape, you know, for those at home, go, go look it up on, on, uh, on YouTube. That is an amazing uh, piece of humanity. Yeah, yeah. And, and you worked for John McCain yes, in the I, early I, days. I, I, when he was a congressman uh, back in, uh, in Washington on his staff. On, on I thought, I thought staff. the other one, the yeah. other moment was Meghan McCain on The View with her father, with, with oh, yeah. Senator. Yeah, exactly. That was, that was exactly. Nice. That, so. was, that felt to me like a goodbye. Yeah, so. Did it to you? I, I, I thought uh, Senator McCain's 60 Minutes appearance felt like a goodbye to me, where he was just saying, I've had a good life, uh, yeah. this has been a good run. Those, those are things people say toward exactly. the end. The practical questions here we have to raise, it's only right. I mean, we've got, it's a powerful position, it's, it's a vote needed in the Senate, um, it's an important vote. What happens, do you believe, in the short term, if, if Senator McCain were not able to to get through uh, even even in the next couple of months, what Look, happens? I, I I've done John McCain since 1983, and and was been privileged enough to work not only on his congressional staff, but I worked on both presidential campaigns. Right. He will do the right thing. I, I have absolutely no question about Meaning, that. Meaning, you think when, he'll walk away? When if if he feels he cannot fulfill the duties of that office. He will do the right thing. I am, I am confident of wow. that. Wow. Okay. That, I that comes as a that. little bit of surprise to me because I thought he is going to go the distance no matter what. Well, I, I, he will stay the distance if he feels that, that he can perform that job. And the blueprint would be Ted Kennedy, his good friend. Yeah. So I, right? I, I, yeah. He, will, I, he will do what's right for this country yeah. and, and for the state of Arizona. I think, Doug, Doug of course, I, I agree with. And, um, but Washington is a, a cold and cynical place. And right now what is happening... Or, they're counting votes for the president's signature item, the tax cut, right. tax reform. Mm -hmm. And John that McCain, could come next week. John McCain can't vote if he's not there. Yeah. Not there. Do they absolutely vote. have to, at this current count, because uh, Rubio's now back in, do they have to have McCain's vote? Absolutely. Well, they can only lose two. Yeah. And, and there's another senator in the hospital. I can't remember which one it is. Dad Cochran. Dad Cochran. Right, right. He's he's in the skin hospital. cancer. Yeah, so that's two. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I, I'm not counting it as close as perhaps you are, but they, they are right down to the wire, and that's yeah. what they're saying. So that means you have uh, Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins have to vote, along with Ron Johnson or... Yeah, or, uh, there are some guys. Or, 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 well, wait a minute. Yeah. And Jeff yeah. Flake, who's and still got uh, misgivings. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. let's roll tape number three. 
Governor Ducey would have to appoint John McCain's replacement until the next election, which would be next November. Well, it, if, if it's done before May, okay, because, because if, 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 if the vacancy doesn't occur, if, let's say it's in June, there wouldn't be enough time to get it oh, right. onto that. On so then it would be two years after that, okay, the next regularly scheduled. Yeah. If it's in the next six months. If it's in the next six months, right. then, then they would be on the August primary and on, and on the, yeah. the, okay. the November if General. this were to happen, and I've said this on this program, and I think it's the perfect choice, John Kyle. There's been a lot of talk about that. John Kyle doesn't need the job, but he could take it temporarily. He's been there, done yeah. that. Yeah. There's no ambition there left right. to, to be in the Senate anymore. And it's a safe but appointment for the governor. But he would hit the ground running yeah. and knows Arizona what, better what than anyone. Well, it, agreed. But what you're really saying is appoint a caretaker and not a senator that's yeah. going to run. Yeah. If it's a senator who's going to run, who's your odds-on favorite? Let me start with Stan. Well, I, it, it, this is, uh, again, uh, the cynical business politics. Yeah. But <laughs> if Martha McSally has not announced for Jeff Flake's seat, my, my, I think she's the favorite. Is it, that why she's maybe holding I'm off? I'm not saying that. I'm I, not saying that. I, 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 I'm running I have for no Flake's idea. Wow. I have no idea. But, but it's, John McCain is in a vulnerable spot. The vacuum of the Jeff Flake seat is palpable. And Martha McSally is, is not announced yet. Two Senate mm -hmm. seats. And we might have two in, U.S. Senate seats on the ballot. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. it's just, Plus this churn with Frank's seat and Cinema seat and her old seat, McSally's old seat. Right. There's just a ton happening. Yeah. What do you, who do you think he might go to, the governor? He could appoint himself. I just don't see that happening. If he wanted to commit suicide. I, yeah, I just down. think <laughs> well, he could appoint himself. He could, you know, a lot, lot of people don't Don't, 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 don't you don't believe, though, that. that that just, for a I, former I, uh, Eagle Scout, there's I, something I, I, about I, that. I do not see it's him. Just I do unseemly. not see him doing that. But yes. he could. It, he under, could. It's true. Arizona is one of the few states that they can do that. People okay, let me that. ask you this, and I've thought about this a lot. Grant Woods, who is not a dyed in the wool Republican anymore, let's be honest. What if John McCain said to Ducey, uh, "My last wish is I want you to put Grant Woods in that I job." I think he's more likely to say, "Put Doug Cole in that job." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, 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 don't th I think that's an implausible okay. scenario. Is there anybody out there that you can think of that? that oh, there's been lots of names. He's uh, Kirk Adams, his chief of staff, has been mentioned. Okay, he's the former speaker right, of the of Arizona course. House of Representatives. I think there are a lot of folks in the legislature that uh, have have dropped their names heavily uh, up on floor nine. Yeah, and I think the, the first calculus is, do you want a caretaker or do you want someone exactly. who's going to hold what do you think he's going to, where do you think he's going to go on that? I, I, if I was advising the governor, and I spent many years doing that, I would say find somebody that's going to keep that seat. Wow. Okay. All right. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break, give you guys a chance to think it over. Uh, final segment, Newsmaker Sunday, Stan Barnes and Doug Cole. Back in a minute. Final moments on Newsmaker Sunday with Stan Barnes and Doug Cole, two just terrific uh, political consultants. Um, final moments here. Donald Trump, uh, let's just roll tape seven silent if we can. Um, is, it, is Trump's presidency, in your view, Doug, going well or is it a complete train wreck? It's a complete train wreck that's going relatively well. On this the big is, issues. This is Donald Trump. This is this is this is who he is, and this is how it's going to be. It's, are, it's, are you it's going to be it's going to be the jump starts here, faltering here, you know, bombast here. It, it's just how it's going to be. Yeah, I, I've spent his entire presidency <laughs> mad at him yeah. for squandering what I think of is the, the, the historic presidency of our lifetimes. A man with no government experience popping yeah. in yeah. and and kicking butt and taking names. He's squandering that yeah. with how he behaves. Right. But, 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 I think I'm too much of a guy to read his editorial page. And the American people are delighted to have that somebody a that ball. is unscripted Absolutely. with a wrecking ball. They're so delighted. you believe his support is stronger than what we're seeing in polling? Well, I, th I think that, that, you know, the coattail issue, you know, we, it was I, in, he, he went all in for Ed Gillespie. He went all in for Judge Roy Moore at the end. You know, I, I think there needs to be a little in that more analysis, political analysis of what that coattail effect has. Mm -hmm. And the infighting with Steve Bannon and stuff is not helping. It's not helping. But at the end of the day, he's doing what his he, voters yeah. elected him to do, he, draining the swamp. Stan, final word, 10 seconds. Yeah, if the election were held again today, he'd win. He'd you believe president. that? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
Guys, thank you. Thank you. Doug, Stan, great to see Thanks, you again. Hey, and we get Kelly Ward holidays. for one more. Yeah. Did her campaign pay for this? <laughs> uh, back on Newsmaker Sunday next week. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. That was a very slick move. <laughs> She's still up here.